Topic for discussion is generalized lymphadenopathy. As the name itself indicates, it is a clinical sign of swelling of the lymph nodes. Normally, this lymphadenopathy can be of two various types. One is lymphadenitis, where there will be inflammation of the nodes. That is, itis itself means that inflammation. Lymphadenitis is a condition where there will be inflammation of nodes. And second thing is, there can be normal enlargement of this uh, lymph nodes. This lymph node enlargement is of is due to two various steps. One is because hyperplasia of lymph nodes or because of any infiltration. Hyperplasia is nothing but increase in number of uh, it in response to any immunological or infectious stimuli. There will be hyperplasia of this lymph nodes. That is increase in number of cells. And second thing is infiltration. Infiltration is because of any uh, any cancer cells or any tumor cells that come and uh, reside within this lymph nodes which is nothing but infiltration usually seen by any cancer cells, lipid cells or any glycoprotein laden macrophages. Coming to the etiology, there is multiple etiology in case of this uh, lymphadenopathy. One is infectious diseases. Infectious diseases can be of viral, bacterial, fungal or various types. This viral infections usually that cause lymphadenopathy are generalized lymphadenopathy especially includes Epstein-Barr virus and human immunodeficiency virus that is nothing but AIDS. And the localized lymphadenopathy because of uh, viral infections can also be seen in case of mumps and uh, other viruses. Next thing is bacterial. Bacterial condition usually any uh, dental origin can lead to cervical lymphadenopathy. However, generalized lymphadenopathy can be seen in case of tuberculosis. Most commonly involved are cervical lymphadenopathy. Uh, 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 then axillary lymphadenopathies can also be seen in case of uh, tuberculosis. Usually the cervical lymphadenopathy then that's the reason it is also called as cholestered abscess. Then brucellosis and streptococcal infections can also lead to this generalized lymphadenopathy. Fungal infections such as histoplasmosis, coccidiomycosis can also lead to generalized lymphadenopathy. Any chlamydial infections, parasitic infection, infections especially like malarial uh, parasitic infection uh, and rickettsial uh, infections can also lead to this generalized lymphadenopathy. Now coming to immunological diseases, various immunological uh, diseases such as serum sickness, Jogren syndrome, drug induced hypersensitivity, in case of dermatomyositis, uh, primary biliary cirrhosis, in case of silicon uh, associated uh, immunological condition and graft versus host disease can also lead to uh, generalized lymphadenopathy conditions and various connective tissue disorders such as SLE that is systemic lupus erythematosus in case of rheumatoid arthritis and in case of mixed connective tissue disorders also there will be generalized lymphadenopathy. And drugs such as ferritoin can also cause generalized lymphadenopathy. Any sarcoidosis that is nothing but granulomatous infections can also lead to generalized lymphadenopathy. Amyloidosis where there will be infiltration of this amyloid material can also lead to generalized lymphadenopathy. Usually this generalized lymphadenopathy is an indicator of any underlying hematological condition such as any lymphomas, malignancy conditions such as leukemias. Uh, in these cases what happens is there will be generalized lymphadenopathy, any infections or inflammations usually manifest as localized lymphadenopathy and in severe infections such as HIV or uh, Epstein-Barr virus usually they uh, manifest as generalized lymphadenopathy condition. Normally benign and malignant conditions also uh, can lead to lymphadenopathy. Usually malignant conditions can, will have this generalized lymphadenopathy in case of metastatic conditions. Here is a picture showing Hodgkin's lymphoma where there is a cervical lymphadenopathy in this uh, child. Now coming to the diagnosis, primary thing is history. History of how this generalized lymphadenopathy has been manifested will, will give us a clue of what is the underlying condition. For example, onset of this lymphadenopathy. Is it a sudden onset or progressive onset? Rate of enlargement, how fast the, enlarge, how fast the enlargement is happening? In case of any infectious or inflammatory condition, enlargement is very rapid. It usually happens within a uh, few hours to days. Whereas in case of any benign or malignant condition, what happens is this rate of enlargement is usually slightly slower in condition in case of uh, benign and in malignant it is little faster when compared to that of benign condition and nature of pain whether this lymphadenopathy is either painful condition or a painless condition in case of any infectious or inflammatory conditions lymphadenopathy is usually painful in case of any malignant malignancies other than those infected secondarily it is usually painless conditions Next, any associated symptoms. In case of lymphomas, we can see night sweats, associated temperature rise, weight loss. These conditions can be seen. In case of uh, tuberculosis, there will be night rise in temperature, productive cough can be seen. In These conditions can, uh, can be seen in case of uh, yeah, uh, conditions like uh, uh, tuberculosis. In case of itching can be seen, especially neck itching can be seen in case of asthma associated with lymphadenopathy. 
So these are the various conditions where there will be have they have some associated symptoms. It is pathognomic associated symptoms which will allow us to come to a diagnosis. Examination. When coming to examination, first uh, size of the lymph node matters. Site matters. So site of the lymph node, generalized lymphadenopathy, there will be generalized condition. In case of localized lymphadenopathy, one particular region, for example, cervical region, axillary region, inguinal region, various region, regions of this uh, areas can be seen in case of localized lymphadenopathy. In size of the lymph node, usually measured in case of, in in centimeters, the size of the lymph node can be measured with the help of a tape, uh, flexible tape. Uh, this size of the lymph node also gives us a conclusion. For example, if the lymph node size is more than uh, 3 cm in size, then it helps us in coming to a staging of uh, malignancies. In severe advanced malignancies, what happens is the size of the lymph node is usually uh, higher in, uh, that is more than uh, 1 cm. So, this kind of uh, size of the lymph node will also help us to come to a conclusion. Coming to shape of the uh, lymph node. Usually, lymph nodes are roughly ovoid in shape. Whenever it, it turns into a spherical shape, malignancy can be suspected. This spherical shape that is from roughly ovoid to spherical shape, the transformation is usually occurs because of infiltration of this cancer cells or any uh, 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 infiltration of the cells can lead to change in the shape. Next is consistency. Usually, inflammatory origin lymphadenopathy is soft in consistency. In case of chronic inflection or chronic inflammation, it is usually soft to firm in consistency. You, uh, in case of uh, any uh, uh, benign or malignant tumors, it is stony hard in consistency. So, based on the consistency also, one can come to a conclusion. In case of lymphomas, it is usually discrete and rubbery in consistency. So, based on this consistency of lymph node also, the underlying condition can be evaluated. Next, coming to fixity. Normally, the lymph nodes are mobile. They are usually mobile in the soft tissue. Uh, yeah, if this lymph node is usually fixed to underlying tissue, underlying muscle or underlying connective tissue, the fixity is usually because of infiltration and it denotes a malignant process that has been happening there. Now coming to secondary changes, usually some lymph nodes will uh, be secondarily infected leading to any discharge from that region. So these are the secondary changes that are happening and associated with these uh, features, general physical examination uh, will also be helpful in case of coming to a diagnosis. That is to know whatever, the, whatever is the underlying condition that has been present. Now coming to lymph node location, the, this, this stand usually is showing the usual, the, the gross lymph node location that is neck, cervical region, in the armpit axillary lymph nodes are present, diaphragm region also there are certain lymph nodes, splenic lymph nodes are present, in the abdominal region lymph nodes are present, and the pelvic region lymph nodes are present, and in the groin region also lymph nodes are present, usually called as inguinal lymph nodes, these are uh, gross distribution of the lymph nodes that can be seen. Now coming to reactive nodes, lymph nodes which are enlarged because of any underlying inflammation or infection, are usually they enlarge rapidly and they are painful and these are called as reactive lymph nodes and in case of localized lymphadenopathy always try to elicit the source of infection that has been draining into that area for example if cervical lymph nodes are involved then the mandible region maxillary region uh, any any source of infection such as dental caries or periodontal abscess can lead uh, can drain into the underlying uh, um, cervical lymph nodes or submandibular lymph nodes are usually involved in case of low upper uh, in case of lower anterior region, submental lymph nodes are usually enlarged. Are enlarged. So the draining uh, region, the area of drainage is usually from this region to submental region. Now submental and submandibular lymph nodes usually drain to cervical lymph nodes. So based again, ear infection can lead into so it can drain into cervical lymph nodes. So based on the uh, region of lymphadenopathy, we can come to a conclusion or we can uh, actually elicit what is the source of this uh, infection drainage. Next, in case of generalized lymphadenopathy, usually they are secondary to infection. But in case of generalized lymphadenopathy, most commonly it is because of any, any hematological malignancy. Any connective tissue disorder or any extensive skin disorder can also lead to generalized lymphadenopathy. So what are the investigations that are commonly done to uh, evaluate this lymphadenopathy? Is First thing is complete blood count. In this complete blood count, what happens is we can see neutrophilia, any hematological disease or elevated ESR that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate and chest x-ray can also be done to check for mediastinal lymph node adenopathy and uh, finally we can also come to uh, to know what kind of cells are present within this lymph node FNAC can be done that is fine needle aspiration cytology or cutting needle uh, cy uh, cytology or excisional biopsy 
However, in lymphadenopathy, excisional biopsy is a gold standard test. And uh, any, any imaging modalities, ultrasound will help us in uh, and knowing uh, the size of the lesion and the size of the lymph, uh, lymph node. And also it will help us in FNSE, ultrasound guided FNSE, where it will actually help us to take a biopsy material through guiding through ultrasound, where it is a real-time image and helps us in taking a, uh, entering appropriately into the lymph node and thus obtaining the material that we, which we want for cytological investigation. So, these are the investigations that can be done for generalized lymphadenopathy. Now, coming to uh, the treatment part, usually generalized lymphadenopathy is not a disease entity. It is a manifestation of any underlying disease. So, whenever the underlying disease has been treated properly, then lymphadenopathy usually disappears. In, disappears. So, this is about generalized lymphadenopathy. Now, coming to splenomegaly. Splenomegaly, the name itself uh, indicates that it is an enlarged spleen. It is also a manifestation. It is not separate disease entity. It is usually a manifestation. It can be because of involvement by any lymphoproliferative diseases or myeloproliferative diseases such as hematopoiesis, any lymphoid tissue expansion or any vascular congestion. These four factors can lead to uh, splenomegaly condition. Usually the etiology of this or of varied etiology, one is congestive causes, usually because of portal hypertension. In this portal hypertension, uh, re, uh, conditions such as cirrhosis or hepatic vein occlusion or portal vein thrombosis can lead to splenomegaly. In case of congestive cardiac failure also, uh, can, uh, splenomegaly can be seen and various infections such as viral infections especially cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, hepatitis conditions can lead to splenomegaly. Bacterial infections such as endocarditis, tuberculosis, septicemia can also lead to splenomegaly condition. Fungal infections such as histoplasmosis, protozoal infections such as malaria, kala azar that is which causes dum dum fever all these can also lead to splenomegaly. And granulomatous disorders, especially sarcoidosis, SLE conditions such as systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, these uh, diseases can also lead to splenomegaly. And hematological disorders, especially the red cell disorders, megaloblastic anemia or any hemoglobinopathies, where the RBCs are usually um, catastrophic, those conditions, especially this happens in the spleen, hence there will be splenomegaly in these conditions. Any autoimmune hemolytic anemias, any neoplastic conditions such as leukemias and lymphomas also, splenomegaly is usually seen. In case of metastatic cancer, splenomegaly is also seen. And lysosomal storage disorders such as Neiman Pick disease and Gorchers disease also, splenomegaly is usually seen. Coming to the clinical features, because of this enlarged spleen, there will be pressure on the abdomen leading to abdominal distension and thus there will be pain or tenderness in this region. Mostly, patient will also have a, a feeling of abdominal bloating and compression of the stomach. Next is, in case of splenic infarction, what happens is there will be severe pain. It usually radiates to the shoulder tip. This is a classical feature of splenic infarction where there will be pain which is usually radiated to the tip of the shoulder. On auscultation, in cases of splenomegaly, we can actually hear that splenic rub usually seen. And uh, in case of spontaneous or traumatic rupture in these cases, because a spleen is enlarged, in case of any spontaneous or traumatic rupture, there will be bleeding seen in this uh, cases of splenomegaly. Now coming to the investigations, in, usually the splenomegaly, spleen is usually not palpable in case of normal uh, human beings, but in case of splenomegaly, as there will be enlargement of spleen, physical examination reveals that spleen will be palpable in case of physical examination. Other investigations include ultrasound and CT imaging, soft uh, biopsy of the enlarged lymph nodes, chest x-ray or CT of thorax can also be seen to see any mediastinal uh, uh, lymph node enlargement and in case of complete blood picture we can see pancytopenia. Bone marrow biopsy in case of this splenomegaly condition usually uh, reveals abnormal lymphocytes and leukoerythroblastic blood film. So this is a condition of splenomegaly and again splenomegaly is actually a manifestation of underlying condition hence proper treatment of those underlying conditions will usually reveal uh, will relieve a patient from this splenomegaly. In case of uh, severe splenomegaly condition uh, where uh, it is further leading to anemia, in those cases, splenectomy is usually advised. Thank you.